What's up everybody, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfill. Welcome back. And today I'm diving into this like little sleeper bomb that came out of nowhere last night. Uh, I was trolling around on the internet and saw this trailer pop up in my feed for a game called Myth Force, which looked pretty damn cool. And what caught my eye wasn't the fact that it's inspired by beloved 80s cartoons, it was the fact that that it's put together by Beamdog. Now, Beamdog has never done a game before. This is the company that's been behind the uh, Baldur's Gate 1, Baldur's Gate 2, Neverwinter Nights, Planescape Tournament, and Icewind Dale Enhanced Editions. Obviously, not being able to do Icewind Dale 2 because the source code was lost, but this company has made a name for themselves being the company who brings back these classic RPGs. And apparently, they have this new game coming out that unites sword and sorcery with gripping first-person combat and a roguelite adventure fit for Saturday mornings. Brave the dungeon alone or join forces with friends to take on an ever-changing castle of evil. Ooh. I want to watch the game trailer with you all today. Hopefully I don't get hit with a copyright claim or anything like that, but uh, it was pretty cool what I've seen. It, I'm intrigued enough to want to do a video about this, so let's go ahead and dive into this. I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and shut my camera off so we can enjoy this in all of its glory. It's like a couple minutes long. Let's go. The realm of Eldred is under siege by the vampire lord Daedalus. Rising up to defy his evil schemes is a band of heroes known as with force. For the honor of Eldrin. Soldier up. This is our fight now. Enough waiting. Let the hunt begin. Women love reformed bad guys, right? No brute can overpower a capable mage. There's the way forward. On your guard. Only fools trespass on my domain. You should have turned back while you still had the chance. You only draw out your own defeat, Force Lord. Beware. This will suck for you. I'd rather face an Archmage than an amateur. This Force is worse than any dark alley I ever saw. It doesn't matter how hard the path becomes. We won't get through without confronting him. You could never hope to defeat me. My minions will deal with you. Don't touch my equipment! <laughs> I'd be terrified if I had minored in minions. We're not getting through this without facing the big guy. Come on, then. Let's finish this. No more games. Death to all trespassers! Play it in early access on April 20th. Tune in next time for episode two. And I have to say, I will be happily joining this uh, early access. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, it's 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 kind of intriguing because it's a little bit of like I, I just played um, Dark Alliance, you know. So it's got that online co-op Dungeons and Dragons feel. Obviously, this is heavily heavily influenced by you know 80s cartoons so we've got you know he-man and dungeons and dragons sort of flashbacks here so the art style is incredibly unique it looks like the gameplay might be a little repetitive it does mention here um i'm gonna go down here and scroll down through their epic store page 80s called they went the heroes back there were some good one-liners in that as well gripping first person sword and sorcery explore an ever-changing castle of evil this is the only part that concerns you slightly it says fresh adventures await with each new attempt to storm the keep explore a replayable dungeon with treasure traps and terrors looking around every corner you can play it alone or you can join forces in co-op mode for up to four players each hero bringing unique skills to the fight we have victoria the valiant knight with rico the charming rogue maggie the wise mage and hawkins the deadly hunter Together, they form the legendary team known as Mythforce. Uh, they're all that stand between Eldrith and the tyranny of the vampire lord Daedalus. Dun, dun, dun. Tune in to the adventure to find out. Um, so there's actually a really interesting article over at uh, gamedeveloper.com 
Then I'm going to go through, uh, can we go into dark mode here? We totally can. Um, it says, what drove Beamdog to make Mythforce its first original game? Why the studio known for its RPG ports is pivoting to drop in, drop out gameplay with Mythforce. Um, so it goes into a little bit of the history of the company, which we kind of know. And if you want to know more, the links to all this information is going to be down below so that you can go read this at your leisure. This game's releasing an early access on the Epic Game Store with only a single dungeon. But the Game Developers Conference 2022, the team showed that they've built a very solid foundation for the game's development. Chief Operating Officer Kale Nicholson and Game Director Luke Rideout told us that Mythsworth is made for players who use games to socialize with each other, whether it's parents and kids or far-flung far-flung friend groups say that five times fast who can only meet online one night a week myth forced has a special market in mind watching beam dog make this kind of shift is fascinating because it watches a studio grow not only because of its evolution in genre but because it shows how modern game sensibilities matter to veteran developers nicholson and Ryder had plenty to offer on the company's journey and give context for why the team jumped into this genre um with many of the backgrounds of the people working on the company being in single player game studios, uh, why didn't they make a traditional CRPG like Baldur's Gate, which is what they've been working on and where some of the team members cut their teeth originally. But they explained that the studio has a love for this genre and it wasn't the kind of game they wanted to play on their own. Classic CRPGs are a deep solo experience, overshadowed by stiff competition, and more difficult to make time for when you have a family full-time job. Nicholson explained that the Beam Dog has plenty of young parents, like CTO Cameron and Cam Toffer, who wanted games to play with kids that weren't Roblox. So even though Mythforce has a little bit of retro-minded sensibility in its DNA, um, it's a drop-in, drop-out, multiplayer component. Uh, I think for me... Um, I really love the art style. Like that's one of the things that immediately struck me about this was like it's obviously stylized, but we're getting that He-Man and Dungeons and Dragons cartoon feel from the '80s. Which they do ask the question to these guys. Um, I think it's right here actually. We did quiz Nicholson and write out, but the possibility that the '80s might be a little overrepresented in games and media right now. And their reply was, a lot of media that references the '80s ends up being in parody or in satire, satire. Um, or they'll update it to be super modern, like with the new She-Ra show on Netflix, which is a good point. Also, the Masters of the Universe show, um, which uh, came out uh, last year and finished up this year, um, that was something that uh, uh, had a little bit of modernity into it. Some people said that it was a little too woke for their tastes, um, but it is what it is. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But uh, in any case, um, so Nicholson here, Made one interesting comment that seemed to want to strike out at how specific a business model their team was working for. He said that their team wanted to make something of an in-between game, the kind of game you play when you're not playing Elden Ring. The idea here of being uh, a game that you can jump into for 20 to 40 minutes, make a little bit of progress, and then turn around and change the kids' diapers is what they say, which is really interesting. Um, they do say that the early point of early access is to try to get community feedback because they want to know if they're on the right track, what people think about the game that they're building, if there's things that they want to change uh, and tweak a little bit here and there. Um, so it's it's all in all, it seems like a very interesting game, and it's definitely an interesting pivot for a company that traditionally has been known for and has been building up a reputation for making these enhanced edition ports of classic CRPGs that we all know and love from the Dungeons and Dragons universe. So I'm on board for this. I'd love to know what you guys think. Uh, leave your comments below, and if you like the video, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so you get updates for future content like this, and don't forget, we have a Discord channel. Links are down below with the gaming community, and if you want to support the channel, you can do so with a subscription membership here on YouTube, or better yet, you can go over to the Weave in the Void Patreon page, which is that world map behind me. It's being produced by the Wandering Hermits, who are myself, my brother, and my wife. we got Nathan Napalm working with us as well. It's a 5th edition tabletop setting with the books due out in June. And we also have a point-and-click adventure game. We can get the free demo now over on that Patreon page. You can also pre-order the game that's coming out later this year. And, of course, a book series like Dragonlance, which chapters are being published twice a month, uh, all being done at patreon.com forward slash wandering hermits. So hopefully we'll see you in Discord and over on Patreon, and definitely here in the next episode of YouTube. And hopefully everybody's looking forward to this game as much as I am. It looks like a lot of fun. See you, everybody. Have a good night. Safe gaming.